action. Hello, this is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy YouTube channel, talking about late summer, mid late summer garden. We have did uh, part one in the courtyard. Now we're doing part two on the outside part of the property. We have a, a large uh, lot that I've been living on for about 18 months now. And for those that haven't been watching the videos, this is a second year permaculture garden. Um, permaculture is a secondary practice in my life. I'm primarily doing this out of my herbal medicine practice that I've been doing for about 25 years. So right here you have a fennel plant that was planted 18 months ago. And this is the second year it came back. They're not normally considered perennials. A perennial is a plant that grows year in and year out. Um, so either the rootstock came back or this seed fell down in here, but this plant turned into a monster, as you can see. And you can see the bees here. And it's just a great, great plant. It's got seeds that are good for medicine. It's got flowers the bees love. It's sweet like licorice. It has a lot of good uses. I mean, it's one of those plants. So we'll be hacking this back in the next few days because it's this poor lavender over here. There's three lavender plants here that were already here when I moved in. And that lavender is being shaded. And there's a little pink hollyhock in there. Right there. A little pink hollyhock flower. Um, that's a uh, marshmallow related to the marshmallow. So, you know, marshmallows you eat. That's where this all came from was this Malva, M-A-L-V-A, -A, Malva family. Um, it's a plant family that likes to grow in the swamps and, the, and in the wastelands. And it's the root of the marshmallow plant is slimy. So marshmallow root in herbal medicine you use for yin or to nourish the slime of the body or the fluids. Um, and then you have the lavender, it's done. The lavender is pretty much done. You can see there's a little, there's a few blooms coming here. And I planted this tree with this other stuff here. And you know, it was about this big last year. I don't even know if this tree is, I don't really care. I planted it mainly for shade. So if I want some plants to not get burned in the afternoon sun, because the sun was over here in the afternoon, I want plants over here. So that's why all that's there. This plant's going to be dug up. We might even do it today, Emery and I. But this is Cyperus rotundus or sedge grass. Very prolific. There's a thousand seeds in each one of these little heads. Very prolific reproducer. Um, it's just, and it's, it's another marshland plant, water purifier. And the root of this plant, um, Cyperus rotundus, are very, very good for female menstrual problems. Very good for liver stagnation. It's considered a very highly rated by my teacher, Michael Tierra. So I'll be digging that up either later today or into the next few weeks. Moving along, um, this is a honeysuckle plant that's been here for a lot of years. And one thing interesting about it is you can see how it, so this is a, a runner that it sent out. So if there was a fence over here, this plant would be, and the medicinal part of this plant's the flower. It smells incredibly sweet and beautiful. So Emery and I have already harvested some of these flowers and since this little bloom came out, we might do a little bit more today. Great for infections, fever, where there's a lot of heat in the body. This, uh, excuse me, this teasel here, what I planted, it was a tiny little thing before the winter and I didn't water them at all and they're gonna do their natural growth cycle. This plant will literally grow through rocks will literally grow through rocks in the soil. Crazy. Uh, moving over here. This is our end of the year compost. So this is going to get a bunch of soil put on it and then I'm gonna water it heavily and then it's gonna go fallow for the rest of the summer. And over here, we'll go walk around there in a minute to this other side of the garden. And last year, last winter's compost bin is now ready. And there's four avocado trees going here from avocados I composted. So now we have four avocado trees volunteer. So that's kind of cool, just for free. Um, over here is something that I just let it do its thing. There's a low part of the property here. And these trees all do so well, even though they don't get watered because this is the low end of the property. There's a big drainage ditch over here. So I planted the teasel, a bunch of berries volunteered, um, some wild lettuce volunteered, some fever few. Um, there's some weird weed right there that popped up in the beginning, looks like a native grass maybe. And so the berries are climbing up on the uh, teasel, the, the tall plant back there. And also 
the uh, there's yellow dock. You can see the brown plant. That's yellow dock, and that yellow dock likes to grow in wasteland areas. And yellow dock is well known as a blood builder. So, oh, look at that. Wasteland plant is also a blood builder. So it purifies waste, but also builds healthy red blood cells. What a concept. Moving right along. All this along here was wild lettuce. I'm, I don't have a lot of time for gardening. So my fast method was to hack it and get it on the ground because each one of these will have 20 to 100 seeds on it, each one of these. And as you can see, this plant, even though it was knocked down, killed, abused, it's still trying to seed out. So Emery and I today will get a couple of hacking shears and just hack this all down because I don't want that many wild lettuce plants. Um, the, the castor bean tree is called managing abundance. This castor tree here went so crazy that it fell over and I'll have to hack this back. But this is the castor bean will grow out of these. And there's a castor flower right there. You rarely see... So this is a really strange looking plant. The castor plant is a very strange looking plant. I mean, look at that. It's like an alien space head or something, you know? Very strange. Um, this bed here was used for poppies and there's wild carrot. And see this part right here? Gopher got it. See, I, pulled, I just pulled the roots out. Somehow it's still surviving a little bit, see? There's still, the plant is somehow still flowering, even though the root was eaten by a gopher. This berry here volunteered. I'm letting it do its thing, um, even though, oh, see, so this is a good example here. We wanna get this out of the walking path. And I'm planning on trellising it up. We'll, have, we'll, we'll print it up and trellis it up, but it'll be right here. That's where we're gonna keep it for next year. So next year we'll have berry vines growing in here. Another berry vine here. I'll either prune that or get it out of the way because we want this walkway clear later. This was all calendula and borage. This is borage. This comfrey is, we're gonna dig this up for emery. That's the mother. The comfrey sent a runner out under the soil and that's a brand new plant. It sent a runner out over there, brand new plant. So comfrey is very invasive, folks. If you, unless you're serious, you want to have a lot of comfrey in your garden, don't grow it. <laughs> so see, Emery, I was telling you, new plant, new plant. You just got to shovel in here and break the, break the old root, dig it up, boom. All these sprouts here are um, borage. This is Tulsi, which I want to grow. I don't want all this borage sprout, so um, we'll probably get rid of some of that. And then there's some calendula that's also popping up over here, which is more of a spring plant. Tulsi is more of a summer plant. Comfrey is more of a spring and summer plant. Um, you gotta keep it watered, that's why it looks so good. Moving right along. This is hops, and the hops is starting to flower. This was given to me by a gardening friend. So there's little, little hops flowers here, the first ones of the year. So they're pretty cute. The ones in the direct sun are drying up and turning brown, so apparently this plant doesn't like direct sun on the flowers. That's how you learn about plants, is, you know, like see all these, it's got brown, the flower just dried up and crispied. I got a theory about UV radiation, that's what I think it is. Um, this is another Tulsi bed. And um, so you're just seeing like overall just a lot of wild carrot. This is wild carrot. A lot of fever few. So these are all volunteers, we call them. This figwort plant, this is an amazing lymphatic herb. You can see it, um, there's seeds on it now and flowers and leaf. And here's ashwagandha. It's an ashwagandha berry for emery. That's a, they call it winter cherry in Ayurveda. So it's a tomatillo, do you see? This is a nightshade, folks. Ashwagandha is a nightshade. So you don't want to eat these berries per se, but Emery will get, there's about 100 new seeds now for these two seeds, two big berries. Another comfrey. There's another view of the castor bean there. So we're really trying, what we're really trying to do is see all this abundance. It's like it's growing into the aisles and see when I, when I um, prune plants, I just put them right down in the walkway here because there's all this gravel with plastic underneath it, which I don't like or care for. So I'm just letting, um, really I'm just letting things grow 
and having as high a level of molt as I can. Um, so there's the Comfrey. This volunteered, this uh, Cardoon, it's a kind of artichoke. Hope is on the way. And this is um, another teasel plant that I let grow this year, but I don't want the seeds to fall on this garden bed, so what I'm going to do is make sure I cut this thing back soon, harvest the roots, and the roots are really the medicinal part. Really good for bones, connective tissue, and adrenal. Um, and it's just a crazy looking plant to look at on top of all that. Even the sound it makes is crazy. Um, managing abundance. Again, this is my compost bed, so come around here. Here is the freak show that is the Health Alchemy Garden. Avocado tree, avocado tree, avocado tree, avocado tree, avocado tree. So all those avocados I ate last year paid off. And so this is last year's compost. You can actually get down in there and see there's no more. It's all the apples and oranges and everything's been broken down. There's some eggshell you see, but this is ready to be used. It smells like nice mulchy dirt now. Did you see, this was all food waste last year. Six months ago, that was all food waste. You can see there's no food waste left. This is a classic alchemy. This is bugs breaking down matter and making making new soil. So isn't that great? See, it's all new soil. And so when the waste goes in here, then all the nitrogen and the nutrients go out to this bed. And this is Bacopa and Godicola and Self Heal. And the little cattail there is Calamus root. Uh, there's a volunteer agrimony. So everything that's in this bed, this is the wettest part of the bed here. And that's the drier part. But these plants normally grow on riverbanks and they're water purifiers. So that's why they're here, because they're purifying the waste from here. Finally, for our last little bit, this is St. John's wort that normally doesn't grow in the city by the coast. And it shouldn't even be flowering this late into the year, but it's still producing flowers. And I'll probably cut a few back today, but it's kind of done. The cats like to lay in here, I can tell. They're using it for bedding, so what do you do? <laughs> and, um, Finally, there's another weird one. This is motherwort. And a lot of people have never seen motherwort before, especially new herbalists. And if you just look at this plant, like it's very, it's a considered a feminine herb, good for the uterus, calming for the thyroid, nourishing yin. And then you look at it though, and it's like, well, the orange flowers are pretty, but man, if you touch one of these spiky things over here, you will bleed. You will bleed. These are razor sharp. So we have a feminine yin plant, like the, like the teasel over there. You know, it's got all these lovely yin nourishing qualities. And then, holy mackerel, look at this thing. It's like a little puff ball, but a dangerous, like, you know, you could put that on the end of a spear and really hurt somebody. So nature is full of contradictions and paradox, and that's one of them right here, motherwort. And then you only want to use this part of the plant. But we'll have a video on that as a solo herb coming up here. And this is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy YouTube channel. Our part two, late summer garden. Get ready for our fall video, which will come up probably September, October. And then we'll have a winter video more like um, January. So we'll be having individual plant updates throughout the rest of the summer. Um, and look forward to those. And hopefully you have a wonderful day and enjoy Health Alchemy YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Woohoo!